So, guys, Crimson freaking Sky. All I want to start with is that we thought that this was going to be epic war, battle the bastards, crazy ass shit. And instead, we got some non action crazy ass shit that is amazing. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an amazing episode in a different way. So much to talk about. Who wants to start? Let me jump in um, yeah. because that was freaking cinema to me. That was yeah. the best episode of the season. I am very confident to say it's the best half, best episode of the second half of the season. I want to say it's the best of the season so far. IMDb agrees by a mile too. Like this is 0.6 higher than the second highest rated episode at a 9.6 out of 10, which is just up there with some of the best episodes of TV on the website. So it seems like everybody loved this. Mariko was obviously the star. And uh, man, I have so many things to say here. I'm going to try and keep it brief so we can naturally talk about all these things as they come up. But my three things mm -hmm. I want to mention for the three different characters, the first being Mariko, which this was her best episode as an actor, as a character. It, it completed her entire arc. And I am so happy that they chose to go this route because this resolved all the issues I had from two episodes ago where I was wondering how they were going to make her have some sort of redemption for her intrinsic intrinsic motivation to live which was never going to be believable if it didn't happen the episode two episodes ago right yeah and because they took that route this was almost the the only way that this could go that i'd be happy i can't believe we weren't theorizing that she was definitely going to get her wish i mentioned it jokingly that fuji or her probably needed to right commit seppaku because they've been talking about it and it, i was I, I wasn't saying that in like a jesting way i kind of meant that but this was almost mm -hmm. the best way that could have that it could have possibly went so i'm really satisfied with mariko's storyline I cannot believe she is she wasn't in my top three favorite characters when we did this three episodes ago, but she is <laughs> firmly cemented. There's nothing that could happen to make her not a top three character of this show anymore. So all just straight five star for her. She was incredible. Uh, now, the other two pieces I want to say here, they're going to be quicker. Yabu. He is just <laughs> the biggest emotional roller coaster I've ever seen in a character <laughs> Almost of any TV show where I was so confident where his storyline was going in terms of allegiances and it just kept on switching in both believable yeah. ways and ways where I just have no idea where we're going for the finale. So Yabu's yeah. going to be a really fun talking point for this. And then my third and final thing I want to just bring up is I may have went a little overboard in my Ochiba as a character praise from her intro episode. And I don't mean to take anything away from her. But mm -hmm. I had her as my Jimmy on the episode. You weren't there. I had her fighting for my fourth favorite character after me her too. Intro. I mean, when you asked me the next step. Yeah, I I just don't know if I'm there anymore because she does seem to be her and Ashido are the bad guys, not her gu guiding Ashido. Right. I know she's still probably the head of it, but in terms of just how I view her as like an all time villain across all of media. She took a tiny bit of a step back, still a great character, but she's not going to be like a top three for me after this. I think it's more just about right. the good guys at this point. So, but overall, like this was the most, one of the most tension filled episodes. Uh, it completed a bunch of character arcs. I thought JB was fucking incredible as he always is. He's been one of the standouts for acting, but all in all, this was a 10 out of 10 for me, even though it was a 9.6 on IMDb. So just full send. This was, this was fantastic. Yeah. yeah incredible episode. Watching it alone. Yeah, I was yelling what is happening to nobody mm -hmm. <laughs> like three or four different times because I genuinely had no idea what was coming next. Uh, yeah, misleading title, right? Agreed. I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe it's not misleading. And we kind of have this conversation. We don't watch or we don't really like watching previews for the next mm -hmm. episode because we don't want to have expectations going in. Right. Right. And if we see a scene, we know it's coming up, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I just knowing the title Crimson Sky automatically I had expectations just preconceived in my head and mm -hmm. I didn't want that but like I was watching I was like oh my god so much crazy shit happened we have 10 minutes left here comes Sornaga mm -hmm. here comes Sornaga here comes Sornaga and he just never came so Luke it was funny you were saying I think it was episode like three we mm -hmm. saw Tornaga give the speech and then dip we were like that's the least we're gonna see we didn't get a lick of him this episode yeah right blew my mind i never ever ever would have thought that that being said this was marco's episode right she was mm -hmm. incredible she shined at luke you just said so much already about just her like character arc in general 
but my God, she really is just mm -hmm. stealing the scene. Um, even when she walks in a room, like we know she's acting, but she still got that presence. It's unbelievable. It's so good. Uh, and what you were saying about Achiba, I agree in the sense that it seems like she kind of lost her bite a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. When she yeah. When yeah. she first she got wasn't, she wasn't stealing every scene as she I thought she was going to going forward. Right. She was brutal when she first got introduced. We saw like she was like, get rid of this obstacle, get rid of that person. Now it kind of seems like she's taking a back seat a little mm -hmm. bit, like you were saying. Still smart as hell. Her right, she's so right. intelligent, so intelligent with the conversations, what was said, what was not said. Uh, mm -hmm. and I mean she's still a wonderful character. Yeah. Uh, this Agreed. this episode nuts though i mean insane we're gonna talk about this it's probably gonna be a long one honestly <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's dive in whenever you guys are ready yeah it's april and anna sawai probably has the emmy nomination and a, and win locked up i, I mean so. if she doesn't get at least nominated but she should get the dub i think honestly i might put her up on at number two and i don't know if that is recency bias or not it would be tornaga then her then jb which would be crazy to think because I always I did pretty much always have her locked in at number three just because I love JB so much and he hasn't done anything to lower himself. It's just that she freaking had such mm -hmm. an amazing episode. Yeah. So when it comes to the Ashiba stuff, you guys explain it perfectly. When it comes to her type of character, she's still smart as hell. She's still a great character. It's just that our expectations of her, we were just expecting her to be very menacing, very get this freaking shit done now. She was not taking no for an answer. Now, she still may be that person, and she's so smart that she understands she can't do that at this point. And she's the person that explains to us why Mariko's death matters so much you know she's the one who explains to us if you let her go this happens if you don't let her go this happens if she dies this happens and now we know why it's so important she's the one explaining everything to us so still a great character we have people like Hiromatsu from the last episode and stuff so i don't know if she's in my top four anymore like you said luke but mm -hmm. um mariko i think she I think she got up to number two for me i love it i love it and I, i'm gonna keep my judgment on the top characters uh, just to myself until we do next episode. We'll do this right, again right. for the final time after we have episode 10, but definitely Ochiba is still top 10. It's just the bottom half of the top 10. Oh yeah. Rather than oh, the yeah. top half. That's the only difference here. Um, so anyway, for the actual episode, let's take a breath and let's freaking get ready to talk through all this because it starts off easy. We just have an easy thing to talk through just a couple of scenes back to back where we have, the final piece of Mariko's backstory where we see those final scenes of her in the snow after her family was killed. Her father, Jinzai, was, is, has been, I forget if he killed himself or if he was killed, but either way, that was like right after it happened. And then we also see her introduction into meeting Father Martin and her introduction to the Catholic religion. So this is all just kind of connected um, pretty quickly before we even get the intro sequence. So is there anything you guys want to call out or it just kind of all makes sense now and there's nothing really we need to add? Real quickly, looked like she was pregnant. Looked like she was holding her belly. Yeah. I think I think that lines up with right. uh, her son. We saw yeah. him this episode. It's about the same age. Um, and then just I love this line from Martine when he gives her the rosary saying, for when oh, you have no when you have no dude, words. Man. When you have no words, you have something to hold on to. Because episode one, right after the Fuji stuff, we kind of talked about this. We were going into your why she hates Christianity. Turns out she leaned into it a little bit. Episode one, after she stopped the whole Fuji incident, uh, and she went into her room by herself and clutched the rosary. Yes. And now we get the payoff episode nine. So mm -hmm. that's and really nice. I love I like that a lot. That was the only note I had that I wanted to bring up, Paul. So good shit. You can see her throughout this season at certain times grabbing onto the cross. And the fact that it's so prominent throughout the season and then they give us that reason and that explanation. I was loving it. It all makes sense, baby. So into the modern time, and this is directly after the end of episode eight, we're having part of our squad. I don't want to say the full squad because Tornaga is not here, but the Osaka squad is rolling up to right outside the city. And the two things like that, that I just want to... The what? Osaka <laughs> squad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is pretty good. Uh, we have a couple of quick interactions on the boat 
just again, Mardico acting as a translator between Yabu and JB and talking about the plan. Then we have them talking about how, I guess when they arrive, we find out that there's essentially a hostage of each of the noble families all held in the capital. That's just going to be leveraged for the Council of Regents in Ishido. Um, and then we're, we're just going to lump in Mariko going to see Lady Shizu and Lady Kiri, who have uh, the newly born child of Toranaga. And they they talk through, they don't actually explicitly talk through the plan, but Mariko hands her a letter, which informs them so that they know exactly what's going to be happening while Mariko is here. So again, not too much, but this is all just the intro part of the episode. Yeah. Remind me, um, when it comes to our dead death do we call it death pool or deadpool because of dead you know <laughs> I'm, th- I think, <laughs> I'm thinking of i it. think they're death pools but we might have called ones we've done in the past dead well i just think of it because of deadpool the movie is yeah. from the death pool mm-hmm. being made but um did we say by the end of the season or did we say in this episode was that our death pool for this episode for crimson sky oh, that i was assuming was it was for this episode meaning we all yeah, got it wrong so, nobody yeah, said okay. Mariko. yeah yeah Wow, I was going to bring that up later. Nobody guessed Mariko. Well, yeah, you, I think you, we were all saying that we didn't want it to happen, so we weren't going to say it out loud. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I said I, I'm thinking about it because I said Lady Shizu, and I still think that's a possibility next episode. As now that Ashido is going to, it's going to be out there that he is holding hostages, and he's probably going to have to just say, "Screw it, I don't care what it looks like to anybody anymore." He's going to have Shizu held and maybe killed. To try to stop whatever Tornaga is going to do, because they obviously didn't get out because the next day didn't happen. Right. What the hell is with Yabu, <laughs> man? Like I, he's talking to JB right here, and I was like, oh my god, they're boys. Like they're just talking. Yeah. He's like, no, there no, is. no translation. Listen to me. And mm-hmm. he's like, do you understand? I was like, this is this is it. This is the this is the romance that like we kind of wanted to go forward and fight together. So this whole episode, like roller coaster, man. Yabu yeah. is the yeah. definition of a roller coaster. It's but so Yabu, crazy. he's like always genuine, though, right? So like he really did kind of like this JB, well, like friendship in the moment. It's such a yeah, it's such a hard thing because we'll get into it a little bit later. But when they're on the boat, Yabu seems like he's homies with JB. He's mm-hmm. saying to Mariko, did you translate truthfully? And she's like, yes. And he seems all excited. And he's saying like, yo, you're my bro. But then when they're in Osaka, it does seem to me like he's using JB. Like he still wants to use JB as like a gift to get to Ishido and Oshiba. Mm-hmm. Not that he doesn't like him or anything, but it does still seem like He's playing a game when it comes to JB. And even though they may be friendly, he's using JB. That's kind of totally how I started agree. To he's, I still think he's playing the position where he can take both sides at any point, And then he just acts on the opportunity when he thinks a shooter has the upper hand and gives him that order to cement his loyalty to that side. I think that's all that happened. I think going in, yeah. if things would have worked out Mariko and JB's way, he would have been all in, I think. But also, like you're saying, Jamie, I had that same thought because in the council meeting, Everybody, I know JB can't understand what Yabu's saying about him, but Mariko's there. She knows what he's saying. So if yeah. he was going to be outwardly against Tornaga, she would have known and reported back. So I don't, I still think he's just playing that. Yeah, he's man. playing it. Yeah. But he still said in that moment, I think he said something like, we trained him well and like weird things, like still acting like he's the barbarian and not a friend mm-hmm. in front of Ashido and Oshiba. And I was like, come on, man, just, just be friends with us. Let's go. I really yeah. don't think it's going to work out well for Yabu no, next episode. Not. I think it's time. I have for a lot of theories. Be... Exit. Yeah, I have a lot of theories for how this all played out and how it actually was part of the plan. And I'm sure you guys probably have those in your head a little bit too. But I don't see it where Yabu's actually mm-hmm. on the side of Tornaga, where he did it on purpose for Tornaga. Well, oh, we'll it'll make more sense not. when we talk about my theory. But yeah, I. I I think Tornaga played him, and Yabu didn't realize he was getting played, but he took the other side, and he mm-hmm. took the wrong side. Yeah, unfortunately. It's going to make for a really sad death for a villain, because I had just had yeah. an attachment to Yabu. So, But anyway, yeah. let's keep going here. There is another quick scene before we get into some of our big, bigger uh, buckets, which is the quick flash to the Portuguese uh, priests. We have Big Papa and Father Martin talking about what happened. 
in um, Edo. And this is what my whole thought was why Tornaga sent Father Martin here to start spreading this news yep. that they're weakened. He explains like the whole Hiramatsu scene and he says that he genuinely believes Tornaga gave up, which is the whole point. And that just yep. is just good dialogue that they put that out there and put that into our right in front of our faces. I don't have anything else about those two because they're going to probably come back into play. But also you do see the black ships captain. So maybe JB is going to get some revenge and hit him, but no sight of Rodriguez, which is always sad for me. That was what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking for Roddy and we didn't get him. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing too much there. Just big Papa. How does he know about maybe you're just blind to his trickery. Maybe he didn't yeah. see it. And maybe if you saw Hiramatsu do that, maybe he would be like, like Martin, be like, all right, maybe, maybe he's telling the truth. But he's either a genius or he's oblivious or I don't know, mm -hmm. getting lucky. The one thing about Tornaga being so good at scheming and trickery, I don't know how acclimated into the culture and into their, you know, town if you want to say it or or you know they're they're whatever i don't know how much big papa knows about tornaga but it does seem that tornaga is so good at being who he is that it is widely known like mariko in the beginning when she's talking to jb yeah. she says he's a he's a he's a schemer he's, he's a trickster so big papa if he knows that reputation he's probably just thinking of it in that way and like you said luke or Paul, I can't even remember who said it, but if they were there, like Martine was, if Big Papa saw what he saw, it might have been such a good trick that he was going to get tricked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I do like that point. I didn't even think about that. The idea that Toronaga's reputation is so sound that, that you always Papa's think not, he's not even believing Father Martin, who was there seeing it. That is an interesting point. And it's like the it's, boy who cried wolf, but the opposite. Like you're just so good at screwing, yeah. screwing with people <laughs> that they just don't believe you whenever you're yeah. trying to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, how I'm going to split this next string of scenes is going to be into three parts. And we're going to talk about the first two parts because they're the, the quicker parts are the pre meeting of all the councilmen and Yabu and Mariko, all of that. So like them walking up and them talking with Kiyama, mostly JB and Kiyama talking. And then mm -hmm. everything that Yabu uh, presents to Ishido right after. And then we're going to talk through those pieces. Then we'll talk through Mariko entering the scene and having her her moment because the first two pieces to me, way, way more boring than the second half. Uh, but what I will bring up is I am pleasantly surprised at how much more depth they added to Kiyama as a character after this episode with yeah. both just his one just great speaking ability in Portuguese like it sounded like just super professional like he he was he knew the yeah. language very well which was cool um the things that he was he was saying to JB I was actually like it felt like it was defining his character a little bit more I kind of liked where he was going and he feels a little bit more religious than I was giving him credit for I thought he was solely in it for the money and he is JB even throws a shot at him throughout yeah. this conversation mm -hmm. but he does care enough to like to to basically protect the sanctity of like sins like for the seconding of Mariko later even though he doesn't actually do it but like he he's he's very aware of it so I liked all that stuff and the fact that Kiyama was willing to do that for Mariko spoke uh, spoke a little bit about his character so I I thought he was just going to be pure just like evil like a Shido yeah just greedy and religious but he turned out to have a little bit more dynamic um fleshed out character traits than I thought and I also think the whole scene with Mariko later when she's showing her fighting skills again, but when she's trying to leave, the look on Kiyama's face throughout this whole thing, it gives him more layers, more more Crixus layers, more onions yeah. here, because, mm -hmm. you know, if he was evil or if he was just bad and only cared about money and this and that, kind of like how they're portraying Ishido right now, he's just, you know, the antagonist. Our, Kiyama's, yeah. Kiyama's watching Mariko, and he's scared for her. He doesn't want her to be harmed he screams she must not be harmed it's it this was a good episode for kiyama and it's yeah. only one more left <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah if like in the very beginning when we saw the whole council i saw kiyama and exactly what you guys are saying i'm like this dude's first one out right like he's corrupt he doesn't give a shit he's gonna be too greedy and be dumb totally not what happened at all luke what you were saying about him speaking portuguese he was very 
succinct and mm -hmm. he was very like uh, the pronunciation was there and it's almost like that's kind of a part of the culture that's why Torinaga wanted JB to dive over and over and over again because he doesn't want to dive and half ass it and look silly like if they're going to show you that they have an ability it's because mm -hmm. they're like you know confident in it, so. it. Yeah, yeah 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 I didn't really think to go back in my head does JB ever speak Portuguese around Kiyama? He doesn't really see Kiyama too much, right? JB? Like, I think this this is his first interaction. Yeah, this is their first interaction, right? So yeah, I'm just saying, so. when JB's around the council members, it's really only Ishido, and that's it, because Ishido comes in when he's talking to Tornago, and Tornago's still in Osaka. They talk about him, you know, in other meetings, but yeah, I was just thinking like it's the reverse version of the Daenerys thing we were saying JB was going to do if Kiyama could actually understand when JB's saying that yeah. piece of shit. Oh, tell him I'm, <laughs> yeah. I humbly. It, <laughs> it blows my mind that Kiyama might be my favorite current regent councilman, right? Well, I mean, like, there's not much competition, but like Ono's at the bottom, Ishida's at the bottom, yeah. Sugiyama's dead, Tornaga doesn't count, and then Psyche, who we yeah, I guess is worth bringing up, has like he has a line of dialogue in this episode, but for the most part, he's just a set piece. Which yeah, he's just standing there. Is are we? Is he in or is he out on the plan? Like, is this could be in? He's inside the castle, and that's big. Really, right? like we were saying, what Paul brought up last episode was that the one thing that he was worried about when it comes to saying Psyche's part of the scheme is that the plan, quote unquote, was apparently that he was going to bring Tornaga in and then roll out, which I don't know. How is that going to even work? He's here. So I think it all changed with the 49 days of mourning. So now Tornaga has okay. to watch himself here. So, okay. So I don't know. Maybe that's all part of the plan, man. Maybe Dude, inside the I castle. I want Psyche. I want him to be good. Psyche so inside badly, the castles man. is would be big, man. I have more faith that Psyche's going to be on our team than Yabu is next episode. So I don't know. Take that yeah. grain of salt. Yeah. Do you guys think anything about that last line that uh, Kiyama said to JB about we have enough pirate merchants in this country already? Your kind arrived here too late. Like, what what is he talking about with that? Like pirate merchants? Was he saying? Was he calling the Portuguese? I think he's the, calling his own. Uh, yeah, homies. the pirate merchants, I, like the black ship and and Big Papa. Like that's that's Big, what I took it as as well, and I didn't know if he he was literally insulting like his his coworkers, like his who he's in a yeah. deal with. But that's that's why I took it because nobody else was there first, right? Like it, the Portuguese showed up, and that's the pirate merchants that he must be talking about. So it was a little backhand yeah, I mean, to them. As a council member, as a regent. You obviously know how much he cares about Japan, but he also just happens to be a different religion, and it's the same religion as the quote unquote pirates, if that's how you want to call them, you know, Big Papa and Martine. So he is weirdly on the fence, but you know, and I would have to assume it, as him being a region, he's Japan first. So mm -hmm. it, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that even though they're his religion and he may. Uh, look up to them religiously he also realizes that they're not japanese and they don't have japanese you know osaka's best interest at heart they just care about the religion part of things and maybe the money part of things too <laughs> i didn't think about it much so i don't have an opinion but like maybe he was referring to him being a protestant but again you said the pirate word and that kind of contradicts that so i don't know Moving on to Yabu, anything else you guys want to bring up? Like, he just presents JB as a gift. Ishido dismisses it, says the heir doesn't care about him. And, like, that's kind of the end of that before he before Mariko enters the scene. Yeah. yeah I just didn't... I just, just assumed this was a whole front, right? Because I feel like the chances that Ishido or the heir actually, like, believed him and took him in were just very slim. Like, I, I don't know if this was just supposed to be something to add on to everything else, but... I was like, zero chance they go for this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they think of Yabu as a traitor, which Ishido calls him a bunch to his face. Yep. And Yabu's saying, like, dude, if you want to kill me, kill me. That's fine. Um, and I guess that kind of plays into the leverage that Ishido has on Yabushiki later in the episode. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this was all just set up for Mariko to come in the back door and mm -hmm. steal the, take everyone's breath away. 
And this was one of the best scenes of the show. Like, Paul, we mentioned oh, yeah. last episode about Hiromatsu scene. This is just up there as well as mm -hmm. probably a top five scene that will not change after the finale. Uh, but Mariko enters and she just has such a presence and she knows exactly what her mission is. There's no sway in her. She has some interactions with Achiba directly. She, Achiba tries to get all nostalgic with her, which she does again later, but trying to like soften her up a bit. But it really comes down to one thing, and that is that Mariko is here on a mission to bring Lady Kiri and Lady Shizu directly back to Tornaga. And she's not even saying that Tornaga is not going to come here and surrender. She's just saying, this is my yeah. mission, with the entire purpose being that sh that Tornaga wants her request to get rejected. So then that, that spreads to the nobility. They realize that they're all hostage. There's a rebellion from the inside, and that plays really well with the attack from the outside that's impending in the next episode. So this is just like the genius of everything coming together. And mm -hmm. it took two watches for me to really get like all the intricacies of it. But whatever you guys want to bring up, <laughs> God, Mariko's the best. Dude, she's there... Posted is so much to break down here because there was so much <laughs> happening on it's happening all at once but it's also in like a it's in an environment where every word means so much right so the stakes are at an all-time high Ooh. which just doesn't matter to Mariko because she's the best and comes in and doesn't miss a beat. I was so confident that everything she was going to say was just the right thing because yeah. she, she, and Ochiba kind of goes into it later on. She's like, uh, Mariko always knew when to leave a room without being asked. She just kind of, it came easy to her. She just knew what was, she could get away with and what was proper. And she crushes it here mm -hmm. because everything's going kind of smooth. They bring up the poetry, which poetry has been such a huge theme in this entire season, and I don't know how to appreciate it. So I know there's so <laughs> much. I know there's so, so much. True. <laughs> so much more going on, like with this poetry competitions. They're even speaking of. We saw Mariko and Tornaga have one. You know, last episode, it comes in huge here, talking to Lady Oshiba, and it. I just wish. I knew. I wish. I wish I understood the the weight of every poem back and forth. What they were trying to do. So I'm um, I'm excited to kind of dive into that and study that. But that's going to be after, you know, the show completes because I don't want anything ruined. Uh, but as soon as that competition gets brought up, we're like, oh, Margo, we'll love to have you compete. And she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I will not get, be competing. And that's mm -hmm. when everything's like, oh fuck, what do you? Here yeah. we go. Here we go. And she's like going against Ashidu. She's saying, tomorrow I'll be leaving Osaka. I'm taking Lady Kiri and Lady Shizu with me. And the whole room was like, rah, rah, rah. they're all like whispering. <laughs> like, what? What's happening? And Ashidu's like, what, what do you mean? Leave for where? Like, you, why would you need to leave? She's going to come back here in a little bit. And everything escalates. She absolutely nails it, though, saying he hasn't seen Lady Shizu and he hasn't even seen his newest son yet. Um, and Uchiba tries to shut it down, saying, "Let's find another time to discuss this. Let's 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 take this discussion offline, off the Zoom meeting, so <laughs> yeah. we don't have to hear." And and she just says, "Nope, uh, thank you, but no, I'm leaving tomorrow." So there's there's so much more going on. I can talk about it more, but I'll give you guys well, a chance. Let me let me give you a correction there. She actually wanted to leave right away, but. She settles for the regents calling a vote to basically give her a petition. I think it's like they're going to review it. Like Kiyama signs off on it. They said, well, and then Mariko accepts, even though she has no intention of staying for too long. But yes. Yeah. I mean, same, while she's accepting, way. she pretty much also says, sure, you can do it, but I'm leaving anyway. And, you yeah, know, I'm yeah. following my, my Lord's wishes and I'm going to leave. And this is also another huge moment for Mariko just because as we've seen throughout the series, when she gave us her backstory with her father, everybody believes that him as a traitor believes that he disgraced his family. But she says, you will not talk to me like this. I am the daughter and of, I'm sorry, I forget his name. Luke, Luke, is it? Lord, I catch you. Jinsai. There you go. Dude, it's like Jinzo, bro. How do you forget that? Come on. <laughs> But yeah, so the fact that she lays down the law by saying she's the daughter of Jinzo, Jinzai, that's huge because it shows that what she's already explained to us, that she believes he is a great person, but she's not going to care what they think. She is just saying, this is who I am, mm -hmm. and it should mean something to you too. 
Um, the entire scene was just freaking amazing. And the, the yeah, internet is losing its mind at what that part you're just saying that the quote is, I am no peasant to be trodden on, which yeah. is just her just like mic drop moment. Like, you're not going to tell me what to do. Like, I'm not going to be mad, be respectful and, and show manners to you if you don't reciprocate. Like, and then she says that whole spiel. It was just epic. And mm. I just did. I was absorbing. I was just sitting there absorbing on the couch. Like, this is incredible. <laughs> A huge line was when she said, I will return to my Lord on the day we are are required to be in Osaka unless we are being confined here. And that's when yeah. that really reached out and mm -hmm. was like, oh, okay, now you're putting Ishido in a, like a rock and a hard place. Right. And yeah. this is exactly what they wanted. And he says, Oh, no one is confined here. Of course not. Um, and then he says, but because you spoke in such an outrageous fashion, you need a permit uh, goes to Kiyama it's like Kiyama even had a choice. I was like, Kiyama, do you agree? And Kiyama's like, yeah, yeah, whatever you want. Man. I concur. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I agree. Um, <laughs> but just everything Margo does was perfect, impeccable. The way she yep. bows, the fingertips into triangle and then gets up, turns around kimono, but like kicks with the right leg yep. to make sure the the it goes all the way around and flares so she doesn't trip over it. Dude, everything is insane i can't imagine the amount of training and stuff they had to go through but it's Hang it's on. unbelievable it's unbelievable to watch yeah anis wise delivery being mariko in that scenario where changing what you're saying at first you're being cordial and then you're continuously being cordial but then you're also putting them in your place and she didn't ever change like her facial expression, she never looked mad. She just never even looked stern. She just looked as she was supposed to look, and she was very professional while putting them in the freaking place, mm -hmm. just as she should be. Just because, even though Ishidu said you're being outrageously disrespectful, that was just his excuse to give her the permit or to make her need the permit. But really, that was the most respectful ownage I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. hell yeah you just got destroyed by your own rules like <laughs> yeah she logic the hell out of that she was like dude my duty is to the liege my liege lord he yeah. told me to come here and come back like i would love and to listen to you it would be my honor but i can't sorry about it <laughs> and to use like their own culture against them because th it's funny where she's like we have to allow lady shizu and tornaga's new son to go to, to their liege lord because Tornaga hasn't seen his son. And if I'm a Shido, I'm like, dude, he's dying in like a couple of weeks anyway. Who gives a shit? Mm -hmm. But it means something to them. Honor. You have to let them go. I mean, it's it's just something, it's crazy because this is war and a Shido knows that his direct enemy is Tornaga, but he still has to allow his direct enemy to see his son. Before he gives himself up and surrenders. Doesn't make any sense to me just because we're used to the world of like grim dark and like death and fantasy. Like you don't grant these type of requests, but it's just right. Just shows how cool the Japanese culture is that they would even yeah, be willing yeah. to listen to that offer. If you know this I mean? was Thrones or if this was another fantasy book, like you're saying, Luke, they'd be like, oh, Tornaga wants to see his son. He can see his son right before we take his head off in Osaka. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He'll exactly. see him in a couple of weeks when he shows up. We'll hand him over to his son and then we'll 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 take Tornaga's life. OK, so let's move on to what happens directly after this this scene with the council. And that's just like the the wrap up, the basically reconvening of what just happened between JB, Yabu and Mariko in their private room. And it's not a long scene, but it is important because Mariko claims that it was all just spur of the moment. She didn't plan any of that. And that's something we can talk about of how specifically that was planned, which I think we agree that it was pretty damn spot on with what she expected to yeah, do. Yeah, scripted. Uh, but one of the things she says is to JB, like, please, please, please do not interfere with any of this. And he's, of course, yeah. freaking out. He's like, you'd walk. He, what he says, which describes the situation perfectly, is you'd walk into a sword just to prove the blade is sharp. And that's the whole idea. Yeah. So he gets it, and that's the point. So I think everything was planned. And then, yeah, it just ends with her her begging him not to tell. Yabu's sitting there like, oh, you guys got to tell me the plan. Like, come on, bro. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Leafless branch? What a terrible poem. Who writes about <laughs> a leafless branch in the spring? 
Yavi's <laughs> pissed off about it. And we know he appreciates poetry because he asked Omi way in episode one. He was like, give me a poem about that dude's death. Yeah. So um, to, to go back to that poem, it's got to mean so much. As soon as Mariko says the line, she was like, oh, we would love for you to give us the first line. She says it. And Ishido being ignorant probably and not understanding the poetry is like oh that was great line that was wonderful if not a little uh i forget the actual word bleak or i think he said bleak yeah bleak, bleak yeah. yeah lady achieva's face is fucking it almost went down it was like yeah. almost went blank so she kind of heard Mardigo say that and almost got like a warning from that so yep I kind of want to dive into that later on and see if there's any more meaning behind it. So if anybody listening, you guys have some theories mm -hmm. about Marco's first line, drop them in the comments, please. Yep. Educate us. I laugh. Yeah, definitely. Discord in the bio. But um Yavu does it for me, man. I was I was laughing when he when he gets all mad and he and uh, we don't we haven't brought this up at all and I'm pretty sure we all know this. Maybe we don't. And it, I just, but I was going to bring it up and I just never did. did. When you guys watched the new Mortal Kombat, did you know he's Raiden? No. Like the okay, new, so new one that came out like, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. Hiro, with, with, uh, Hiroyuki Sonata. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. He's, that's uh, awesome. He's, he's apparently Raiden. So why I'm bringing this up is because I saw, I've seen Mortal Kombat once. And if anyone knows Benchtown, you know me, Luke, we've we love Mortal Kombat. I can say the Mortal Kombat's lines from beginning to end, the original Mortal Kombat. So the fact that I've only seen the new one once kind of tells you all, need, all you need to know. It was okay, it was fine, it was whatever. But Tornado Raiden, was the best part. I will say that. Yes, he was. And Raiden, I don't remember him sticking out to me. Same. But Yabu is a freaking star. So I need to. I kind of want to rewatch Mortal Kombat to see him as Raiden because I was thinking when it came to Kiyama and certain characters like that, I was like, I wonder if Yabu's actor does English speaking roles. And then that's when I saw he was Raiden, and I was like, oh shit. So I don't know. That's I guess awesome. I'm gonna have to rewatch and see. How did, yeah. How did you stumble into that? Pretty Said much it. exactly as yeah. that, yeah. Because I was wondering if he's been in any English speaking roles, and oh, so you I like think... IMDb'd his whole. Thing? So I looked him up, and I also saw like a thing. It was, it was pretty early on in the show that was like, oh, Scorpion and Raiden are in Shogun together, and I didn't know Yabu's actor's name, so I was like, oh, that doesn't mean anything to me. Let me, and right. then I ended up looking it up, and I was like, oh shit, damn, that's pretty cool. The good catch. Dude, he Yabu is amazing. His actor incredible. I like just the one little little reaction here when he's freaking out and Marco's like, "Please excuse me, I'm very tired from the day." He's just like, "Huh?" <laughs> like, just, yeah. just like it's his, anime. It's anime. Yeah, just mm -hmm. just like the noises he makes is so funny. Like when uh, JB was putting on the suit and he was teaching him how to bow. Uh, JB bows and Yabu's just like mm, grunts in approval. <laughs> like he he like just makes noises sometimes yeah. to communicate. It's it's dude. Really I'm cool. I'm looking this up right now and he's completely clean shaven. Like you can tell it's him now that we know him and we love him. But I'm looking at a picture and he's so like clean shaven and he has the uh, Raiden outfit on, so you can't see his hair or anything. So I wouldn't have known that unless I looked it up. Cool. That makes me feel better. I'll definitely have to rewatch. <laughs> okay, let's keep moving because we got a couple other big scenes to get to. This is a quicker one here, and it's the next day after uh, Monica goes to sleep there after that conversation, and she has a conversation with her kid. And wow, does this kid take after Buntaro, man? I hate this kid. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> sucks. So he's, I mean, that's, I'm being hyperbolic yes. about it but he's yeah. very into the religion he's been in osaka since the beginning and he's it seems to be he's being swayed by kiyama to now having this uh engagement to his granddaughter so he's all in on the religion he's all in on mariko's family is a curse to have that name so of course like knowing what we know now this kid sucks and mariko's the good side <laughs> like yeah. that's just yeah. how i walked away feeling it feeling about it and um he doesn't even like care when she's about to 
commit Sapaku later. Like he has no real emotions on his face that I picked I mean, up on. So no I, I feel comfortable saying this guy sucks, just like his father. Yeah, he's, I, he's 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 pretty much saying if you do this, if you continue what you're doing, I'm no son of yours. And mm -hmm. he so takes Edward Bantaro in that way. And how can you look our girl Mariko in the eyes and say something like that to her? I how know. dare you? When she he's saying, please don't dishonor us. And she's the most honorable person yeah, we've ever seriously. fucking seen. In his defense, I, I, he is in this place. He's oh, in yeah. Osaka where everybody that is raising him, teaching him is saying, yep. hey, you're from a disgraced line. So oh, yeah. he's he's always the bottom of the po totem pole. He's always the punching bag. So, like you know, you get it, but it's such a skewed view of who Mariko and who his li own lineage actually is. It's just a shame that he, he was stuck in that environment and that completely shifted his perception of who he is and where he comes from. Mm -hmm. And you have to think too, Bontaro is one of those people that thought that she has a disgraced family. So when they were a family, meaning Bataro, Mariko, and their son, she wouldn't have been able to explain who her father was and why she believes he was honorable and why she believes he did the right thing and her actual beliefs. She wouldn't have been able to explain that to her son. All her son gets to hear is exactly what you're saying, Paul, everything everyone else is saying. Mm. including his own father. So, yeah, I mean, you can't really blame him just because he's pretty much, quote unquote, brainwashed. Yeah. It's just what he's lived lived with. But it's brutal for her. To see. Brutal yeah, for her. To see. Yeah. I'm willing to not take context into account to hate him. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Luke will hate him so hard that it'll account for all of us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just brutal because Marco, she's like trying to do what's right for her Lord. And now, if she does that, she's going to lose her son. Just heartbreaking. Heartbreaking yeah. for her. She's the best character. I love her so much. Dude, oh, she yeah. just might be number one right now. She right is. now. Yeah. JB, has a, J JB and Tornaga have a chance to jump her. But right now, I think she's number one. Uh, let's move on to the reason why she's number one. Or part of the reason is this next scene. And this is just going to be her doing the pseudo escape. Like, knowing in yeah. her head she's not going to be able to get out of here. But she's going to test Tornaga's plans to the fullest, and she's going to take Lady Kiri and Chizu, who know the plan, with their whole little entourage, and openly defy the council's wishes to keep them there until they get a permit. And this is really important because also everybody else that's that's not going to be like a guard is like on the walls watching what's about to happen yeah. because she has openly told the the whole city what she's going to be doing. So everyone's like, "What the hell is happening?" Right? So. This happens in two parts. And one of my takeaways from part one, which is like her walking up with her entourage that all end up essentially killing each other. And then part two, which is the wave, the second wave of, of people that come in and Mariko does the fighting herself. So there's going to be a ton that we can talk about here. But my, one of my comments is that Mariko definitely should have helped out in wave one because they would have had some soldiers <laughs> left alive for wave two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, like she is by far the best fighter. But two, I love the realism approach that they took in this scene where they a lesser show that leaned into fantasy or sci fi or just like the spectacle of a TV show. Yeah, would have had like the whole entourage from the first part live. But they actually all died. Mm -hmm. And we even started it off with a bang with one of the, the lead soldiers just absolutely murders the hell out of two of the guys that confront her at first. So I was thinking. Okay, they might just like get away with just having their Tornaga's advanced guard just murder all the soldiers and they get out. And I'm really happy right. they did not take that approach. And at the cost of like human lives, like these people were all people that knew what was going to happen almost. They all and they're even happy to die. Like the last guy that survived says it was such an honor. So just a lot of realism mixed in with just a lot of good action here. And and to add on to the realism, I'll let you guys talk is. I was worried in wave two that they were going to have Mariko kill all these guys. And I was oh, like, it would have <laughs> been really cool to see. Yeah. But like, we got to be realistic. Super here, right? like, there was just, there was just no way it was going to happen. So it yeah. basically worked out in the best way to keep everything realistic and get the job done in Mariko's head of like what the whole plan was. I mean, the buildup 
just absolute insanity. I was so tense. You know, they get ready. Are you ready? Mar like Lady Marco, like, let's go. Uh, everybody moves in. The first guy, as soon as he's like, you need a permit. She's like, dude, I'm ordered by my Lord to escort these women to, to Edo. It's like, sorry, you can't get a permit. Ah, you leave me no choice. Please kill him. I love that. Such a casual, such a casual double murder right there. I mean, dude, he, he goes bows up, before. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He bows like takes the guy's fingers off too. They showed that, so he couldn't weld. He couldn't draw the sword as well. It, just three swings to take out two men. It was beautiful. A fucking archer up top, cheater. God yeah, right. I I was waiting Archers for JB. Are... I would have bet money JB was gonna like tackle that guy or like. Dude, or, I like... thought he was getting involved too. I just want to say with it, when it comes to Mariko, everything about her is amazing, but there is nothing more badass to me than when she didn't move for the arrow for Bontaro, mm -hmm. and then this entire scene when the throwdown happens and they're all fighting around her and she didn't flinch or move once. Yeah. So cool. Everybody, all it's madness all around her. Swords slashing by her face and ears and, and, and every part of her body. And she's just standing there like, I am a badass and I'm not <laughs> going to move. And if you slice yeah. me, it's on you because, again, that's technically what she wanted because the whole point is when she dies, that's when Tornaga's plan worked. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking what you said, Luke. I was like, Marco, why didn't you help out in the first wave? That would have probably been uh, a mark of shame on the samurai yeah, the warriors right. because they were like oh wow we're not good enough we forced our uh lady mariko to True. join in the fight yeah when she comes in and does fight that's all in my eyes it was all a show she's acting like here i'm gonna start trying to fight you i'm gonna start trying to fight you and then it's like ah you leave me no choice i've disgraced yeah. myself i have to commit seppuku at dawn or at um uh, uh when the sun so, goes down yeah crimson mm -hmm. sky baby so baby it was all an act, and it was a freaking amazing acting job. Well, there was like a 3% chance that <laughs> she was going to win that fight. Yeah, do you think <laughs> in her mind she was like, my boys will take out all of his boys? Well, what if literally she went to throw down with them, and Kiyama yells like you, she can't die? Like, I mean, he literally says you cannot touch her, you can't kill her. Yeah. And, you know, to their credit, they're doing very well at just like blocking her down and stuff. But what if she won and then she just walked out? She'd probably be like in her head, like, shit, this plan's screwed. She has to like I've... walk back in and be like, someone kill me, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She'd be like, oh, I need to kill myself because I yeah. was too successful. Well, then, then she would have also needed to kill herself because she would have failed the real plan. Yes. So that would have made yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, so... I failed my lord. So now I'm going to be at the gates of Osaka and I'm going to just have to myself yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. you you touched on this real quick jimmy when you said kiyama was there watching he, he even says and ono says we are powerless this is not yeah. our orders these are not our men so they really show how weak they are this is and that's they... sorry i don't even mean to cut you off but <laughs> that's good. also part of the plan because they yeah. are regents and if they admit they don't control these people and they're ashido's men that is another check to the to the strife and to the internal rebellion that's going to be happening in the city. Oh, we're not hostages. Oh, these regents are all equal. No freaking way, Ishido. And you know it's exactly what Tornaga wants. It's all freaking like I've never seen throughout a show plans like this happen yeah. in this way. Where it's, I'm like just constantly being like, is this part of the plan? Is this part of the plan? Jesus, is this part of the plan? It's it's like Tornaga's like, all right, like we have checkmate in like 107 booths. Like he has it all, <laughs> he has it all lined out. It's like, okay, yeah. we send her in, they're forced to do this. We, we retaliate with this. It's, it's absolutely nuts. Uh, and yeah, I totally agree. There's no way they were going to get through it. Right. Um, and to your, but, to your point, Paul, with the chess thing, I saw someone tweet. It was pretty damn good saying like Tornaga got checkmate, but he had to sacrifice the queen, Mariko, the, yeah. the bishop, Irmatsu, yeah. and the knight. And his yeah, son Nakakata or something or, like yeah. or not yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i did see that same thing that's so cool yeah damn so that good. does work out really well um and i love this scene it was honestly there's so many good ones i don't know which one's my favorite but this was obviously up there i don't want to take away from it because they've been so good and so accurate and i could be wrong here but i believe when Marnico like takes out one or two 
they have I believe it's one v eight. It's Mariko versus eight spears, and then there's men behind with katanas. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe she takes out or at least one. I saw the one on the far right. She gets him. Mm -hmm. And another one at least injures, like hits him in the face. I don't know if she cuts him because it was the butt end of the Naganata. But they have continuous shots of eight men surrounding her with spears. And I oh, was really? little, I was a little bummed out about it because they're so consistent. And again, I might be wrong, but the way I took it, they had eight spears in front of her. She takes out two. Maybe other men come up, but they didn't have spears. They had katanas. So where did the spears come from? I don't know. It's very, very small thing. And it was like bang, bang, bang. Like the cuts were less than a second almost. So mm -hmm. I don't want to put too much weight on it because I was literally pausing, rewinding, pausing, like going frame for frame. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But that is just a small, teeny tiny thing. But other than that, I mean, this – fucking episode was nuts and yeah. her screaming oh, yeah. her her helplessness totally it felt like it came through right like if this was all an act at the end when she starts screaming she starts like she her swings are getting more reckless i mean fucking phenomenal acting they don't give out oscars mm -hmm. yet the academy wasn't formed yet but goddamn or naga <laughs> and her both should get one because their acting yeah. is insane it's so yeah. convincing and this ends with something I, I mentioned when I was raving about Kiyama earlier, but I like that Mariko turns and looks up and asks Kiyama to then be to second her because suicide's mm -hmm. a sin. You can't be the one to end your own life. And then he accepts. So we can put a pin in that because that's going to come up again. Um, but are we good there? Are we ready to move on? Yeah. Cool. So this is a, no this is a quick scene where we, we basically get to see the council in closed doors. The council plus Ochiba, who... We didn't even mention this, and I, it's my fault, but Achiba accepted the engagement to Ishido. Like, they're engaged yeah, now. Yeah, right. I forgot to mention, that's very important, because that also shifts a lot of the power back to Ishido, and that might be a yeah. lot of the reason why I have the feelings I have about Achiba not kind of being, like, the alpha. She might still yeah. be the alpha of the two, but it's, like, lesser than it was when she initially was introduced. But this scene is just the council plus Achiba talking about Mariko, and, yeah, whatever we want to talk about. Exactly what you were saying, Ishido kind of takes the mantle of power because of this engagement. Mm -hmm. She is a smart one. She's the brains. It's kind of been this way since she showed up, and Ishido knows this. And eventually, she kind of spits out a line, and he's like, all right, like, what's your counsel? Yeah. And she's like, what do you mean? I don't have any counsel. You're, yeah. you're you know, my mm -hmm. husband. I'm engaged to you. You're the brains. I'm just saying... <laughs> yeah. if anybody wants to hear it yeah you know if Mariko dies then everyone will blame Osaka and Osaka will be disgraced and every royal family will revolt blah 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 so I mean she just lays it out square and pretty much it's just the genius of Torinaga he and saw all of this like to Ochiba's credit she nailed what's probably going to happen because the flip uh -huh. side she says Okay, if you kill her, what you just said will happen. But if you let her go, all of our hostages here are going to ask to go, and we're going to have zero leverage. So yep, she's she's smart, and they kind of Ashido takes everything she's saying to heart, and for the rest of the episode, like she lays that all out and said, "Osaka will be disgraced." Saiki goes a bit extreme, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And the <laughs> death stare from Lady Ochiba was insane. I felt bad. I got embarrassed for him that he said something so dumb. No, dude, Saiki's trying to downplay it. So yes. He flip, That's what I was going to say. He's like, let it happen. happen. Let it happen. Dude, yeah. He's, cool. yeah, he's Come like, on. dude, I just, I heard all of this from Torinaga like a little bit ago. <laughs> and, and now she's bringing it out. So he's yeah, like yeah. trying to, trying to push the attention yeah. away. Totally agree. God, I, that's so funny. That needs to happen now. That yeah, needs to happen. If that happens, they can. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So let's <laughs> let's just keep going because this is a really good scene where JB gets some. Like this is gonna be like a, a huge talking point all around the internet. I've been seeing people react. Like everybody that's been watching Shogun loves the female actors. Like they're killing it. And like this Amazing. is a oh, yeah. huge just powerhouse versus powerhouse. So Chiba versus Mariko with JB just kind of being the backdrop that allows <laughs> yeah. this all to happen because he gets yeah. summoned to to talk with the heir in quotations who 
obviously that's not the real reason it's it's a front to have mariko be presented to achiba and they can actually have this conversation i'm not going to go through all of the things that they say but a lot of it is breaking down more of their backstory which we knew a lot of it but it's really just highlighting how Chiba feels about Mariko and vice versa. It's emotional. It's, it's, it's tense. Like everything that's happening. JB's only getting half of it because he's only involved in the first part of the conversation. And then they drop that front. A lot's going on here. And it seems to be like almost a last conversation between old friends tinted with a lot of aggression and, and like, you know, wordplay of what's really going on here. They keep mentioning yeah. like the games that you're playing here. Like you can end this, all of this is happening. So it's a very politically charged seen and i'm sure like on rewatches like it probably gets better and better like i liked it more the second time i watched it i just felt that they spent a lot of time writing this dialogue and making like where they're going to be standing when they say certain things like i noticed a lot of those things um but all in all it was just a great scene that ends with mariko kind of re-emphasizing the need to throw away her life and the beauty in it so there's just a lot of you know uh symbolism here just just a lot going on so yeah whatever you guys want to talk about to just point out how smart Lady Ochiva is, when this engine, when JB first gets there, she says, I'm told your Japanese is decent. Can you understand me? He goes, Yes, but respectfully, I uh, request you use simple words. And I'm like, Look at my boy. He's picked up so much. He actually understands all that. He was able to respond to her in what seems like this, like a decent sentence. And she goes, Ah, oh, prepared phrase, smart of you. And I'm like, I didn't even know that. I fucking I loved you just, that from Ochiba. I loved yeah. that line from Ochiba. Like you literally just met him. He said one sentence to you and you already knew that. I've been watching him for nine hours and <laughs> I, I have his backstory and I didn't even realize that that was a prepared phrase. So she is like, I can't understate how smart she is. That she, was a great line. Thank you for bringing yeah, that. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love to have when this whole thing is starting, thinking about how everything plays out, like you said, Luke, super politically charged, super emotional. JB starts by just winking at the air. <laughs> he like, yeah, he's a little kid and he's like, yeah, he's like, <laughs> and he just winks at him. And I'm like, you just got to think like, this is the air. This is yeah. like the Tycho <laughs> eventually I, when he gets older and Jamie's like just winking yeah. at him like he's nothing. It's a little kid. I was like, can that be disrespectful? Like, could, yeah, right. Like, could he be like, actually? He left. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, the but... kid was like, Let's, yeah, man. We're cool. <laughs> I would have been nervous. I would have been nervous. Um, but yeah, I like how you were bringing up, Luke, the positioning of Mariko and Oshiba through these conversations because one of the biggest things that was kind of surprising me when i brought up last episode how is oshiba going to react when she meets mariko are they going to be friendly are they going to not like each other is oshiba going to be very you're on tornaga side so f you i didn't even bring up the fact like a dumbass even though i knew it i didn't say it on the pod like her dad killed her dad you know like mm-hmm. that kind of thing is even bad but the way this conversation is happening it really does seem unless it's an act like she's really cares for Mariko, like they're friends, they have this background together, and then the positioning, even though she's giving this conversation to Mariko and she's saying, stop what you're doing, blah, 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 when they get into like telling their backstory, and at the very end of it, she turns her back to her, and the tear comes down, and Mariko doesn't know. All she heard was what came out of her mouth, doesn't see the tear from Ashiba. We see the tear, not Mariko. Genius, Genius. and it's cool that... Ochiba isn't just relentlessly against Mariko because that was my prediction when you asked the question last yeah. podcast. I thought it was going to be straight aggression, but there right. is some empathy there. It's way more complicated than just one emotion, and I like that it came across really well. Is what I'll just say. Yeah, it, agreed. It's they're balancing. They're both balancing all these things, and it, it's just played really well. Agreed. The the relationship's so complicated. We you guys touched on it. But to go into it more, she's saying, like, we grew up like sisters, but our fathers were enemies. Wars raged in our castle, but I had Mariko, and she was my happiness. And then she got sent away. And then this is her first time seeing it since, years later, after they become different people. Like, it's Mm -hmm. insane. Could you imagine, Luke, you know, when you're like, 
18 or whatever. I didn't see you for like 20 years. And all of a sudden you and Jimmy are like trying to take my house down. You're nuts. <laughs> yeah, dude, me and Luke would totally take your house down. Uh, we would, and by the way, it's Emily's house. But I mean, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I love how you just took the Ochiba side. So, OK, whatever. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I love how you just took the Tornog Tornaga sign. What are you talking about? Yeah, gladly. <laughs> me and, would me you and rather Jimmy be, or Mariko Luke, would and you rather be Tornaga or Mariko? Well, I mean, after this pick, episode, I one Tornaga. Of the <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. like four Dude, times I would, longer. I would, I, would, I would follow your plan to the death, Luke. I think we, you're would, my I think we would get it done, too. I mean, look, <laughs> Paul's our enemy. You're my, you're my liege lord, Luke. <laughs> um, anything else we want to bring up before we move on? we got a couple more big scenes to get to, and then we're pretty much done. Just the kind of the last thing I got was Ochivo saying, like, what do you want me to do? You want me to surrender? And have a pointless death, and like your leafless branch, what she threw that yeah. in there. Uh, and at the very end, Mario goes like, you know, accepting death isn't surrender. You know, she has the line, "Flowers are only flowers because they fall," which means you know they have a lifespan. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know. It seemed like that really hit home. Kind of what you were saying. Also, Ochiba really overstepped the line when she was saying, you know, to Mariko, tell me how piercing your heart will protect your son. And as soon as Ochiba brought up Mariko's son, Mariko was like, all right, time to bounce. This is mm -hmm. it. Like she, she overstepped. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, she hits her with the last line. So I, I feel like, I don't know. I don't think she, Lady Ochiba was persuaded at all. I think this was just a, here's my view here's your view this sucks but i don't think we can come to a resolution i think we're gonna buy right. yeah which is i how think they had both happen yeah i think they both thought that if anybody in the entire world is going to sway one or the other it's going to be them with each other and if they're not going to sway each other with the conversation they just had then it sucks but it's time to part uh okay so the two things that happen before we start getting into the montage of Mariko working up to her seppuku is one, JB goes to Mariko and essentially begs her to not throw her life away. So that's going to be fun to talk about for a second. And then the other quick thing is we see Yabu being offered a shot at redemption if he's going to eventually let the assassins in at night or the shinobi, if you want to say that. Uh, but more importantly, let's talk about that Mariko and JB conversation because this felt emotional from JB We've been praising his acting the entire time. I felt the sadness and I felt the desire to just keep yep. this person that's been centering you in this foreign land of Japan alive. Like he he is so attached to her and it makes sense that he's appealing to her emotions like that. But she can't mm -hmm. say yes. Of course not. Like JB can't be the right. reason that she doesn't go through with this crazy with this like insanely well thought out strategic plan. Yeah. He's saying, you know, Lord Tor and I are sending you to die. How shameful of him. You don't have anything to prove to these people. There's no need to die. Meanwhile, she's like, you don't get it at all. She's surrounded by men that just don't get it. Buntaro doesn't get it. <laughs> JB doesn't get it. She's saying, it's the very reason my father kept me alive. It was basically for this right here. What I'm doing, what I'm about to do. Um, and he just, he loves her so much. He's like, all right, fine, fucking... If not for good sense, if not for God or whatever, would you consider living for me? Which she grabs his hand in public, even cups, yeah. it, a little, even cups it a little bit, but then backs away. So mm -hmm. it was no word spoken, but it was like, Someone's yeah, cutting onions, man. I care for mm -hmm. you, but, you know, priorities, you know, it, it is to my Lord first and my family for my father's sake. I think we need to call each other, all of our us, we need to call each other out. And I think we all logically knew that Mariko's good story, a story that was going to be written great, would end like it did. Mm -hmm. The fact that we were saying, especially me, like, what will happen with Mariko? Oh, she'll find a purpose with JB because they'll love each other and that's going to be her reason to live. That's wishful thinking, yeah. you know? That's like um, a story. A lesser show. History. You know, I don't want to say Hallmark because if they did that, I still would think the show is amazing. But at the same time, it is a lesser show if you go there because it has been written to this point. It has been written perfectly to the ending that Mariko had. Mm -hmm. So having this conversation with JB 
telling Mariko, finally, everything besides throwing the kitchen sink at her besides saying, like, I love you. He basically says that to her. And if anything, again, Shiba, JB, if anything was going to change her mind, it would be something like that. And she didn't really sway at all. I mean, right. she hardly answered him. She gave him the nice handhold. But again, JB doesn't get it. Mariko is who she is. She's the best. She has her purpose. And we were giving her shit because we knew they were going to fix it. You know, we were mad about how she was saying, just let me die, let me die, let me die. And she has her purpose. And this is how it was supposed to be written. And it's written beautifully. And it's a shame for our boy JB. Wish they could be together. They get to be together one more time before the end. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to call us all out because I feel like logically we should have just known that's what was going to happen, but we all just wish that yeah. she would just stay alive because we love her. Right. I was convinced it was a love story, man. It was yeah. These two are going to be good. Now we're going to talk through that montage because a couple things happen that lead up to this, uh, this, this meeting of Mariko and all the people that are her stakeholders, like you know, Shizu, Kiri's there, some of the, her sons there, so. She goes to Father Martin to have her last rites or do her last confession um, mm -hmm. for her religion. She wants to clear consciousness consciousness before she passes on. This was, I felt, worth doing just because it keeps... Like, there was a huge period of Shogun as a show, like, where four or five episodes went by where we just didn't see anything religious for her besides her wearing the cross. So it's good that they this episode, they took the time since it's her main episode to show it in a couple of ways that she is truly religious. It didn't have to be deeper right. than that. We saw the origin and we're seeing the end of her religion right here. So good moment with Father Martin um, also making him important because he truly cares about her. He has not a yeah. single evil bone in his body. He's just, a, you know, he's just a good guy. So while that's happening, and I would love if either of you guys can explain this to me because I just did not <laughs> pick up on what was going on with JB in the garden and drawing the line straight before they all meet into that room. And then, you know, like the scene happens where JB steps up to to second her and place a Kiyama. But before that, they all meet. What was going through JB's mind or what was the takeaway that I just completely missed because I'm dumb? No freaking idea i had that oh, i had that written Thank down <laughs> and I, I i just completely made up two things there was like zero evidence to back it up but like one is like the title sequence is like a ship mm -hmm. sailing through you know the stone garden so maybe that was like a nod to that going against everything that was set in place everything proper like making your own way or he drew a line one side, you know, go on without Mariko, live your life. The other, save her, something. I don't know. I literally had no yeah. idea. And he, maybe there was just, he was trying to see one side or the other. I had no idea what was going those on. Those were great interpretations, better than what I had written down. So I liked both of those. Yeah, oh, I took I it like the first way, Paul. Okay, that's nice. I, yeah, I, singular well, I mind. thought you were... <laughs> we're of singular minds and then we pause for a second because i thought you were gonna say something and i'm like i agree paul and then just said nothing <laughs> else uh, yeah i i took it like you know everything when it comes to the culture that jb has been acclimating to throughout the series is especially mariko like everything's perfectly in place everything's honorable everything is exactly where it needs to be it's, everything is said the way it's supposed to be said so the zen garden obviously you know is perfectly made. So I took it like he was causing some chaos and mm -hmm. just ruining something because he's upset. But I, I have no idea to be honest. Oh you know? wait, that that could be good, right? Because of like stepping on there is like not. It's considered disgraceful. Don't step on the moss and yeah. And he's going against the tradition. Okay, I kind of get that. So, but it, but it would, could also be read as what you just said there, but with a different conclusion that. He's deciding going against the grain and, and causing this chaos is a bad thing. So that's what directly leads him to volunteer to second Mariko in place of Kiyama because he's accepting his place in this garden and, and trying to acclimate more into Japan. I'm reaching. We're just throwing yeah. things at the wall. Somebody might <laughs> making, be partially right making here. The actual, yeah, making the actual choice somebody from Japan like at th that Mariko would make. Like, 
you're not going to ruin Mariko's plan. She's doing what she believes is right. Mm -hmm. So it when Kiyama doesn't show up, I'm not going to grab her and run to ruin everything. I'm going to give her the mercy that she requested and be her second, even though it's going to kill me to do it. So let's talk about this because I thought this was one of the most tension filled scenes of the entire show. I was verbally just spitting my thoughts out next to Dave while we're watching this. I'm like, they're not going to make JB do this. They're not going to fucking make him do this. I was just like, please don't do that. I cannot watch this happen. I was a hundred percent convinced she was going to kill herself, but I didn't know if JB was going to have it in him to second her. I'm yeah. happy that neither happened, but I, I, they got me like they completely convinced me that this was going to happen. And I love the reveal that Ishido comes in. And the reason Kiyama wasn't there to second her was he needed to be part of the vote that would get her the permit to allow her to le to leave and live. So mm -hmm, right. beautiful scene. The tension was destroying me. And JB's acting again like he as an actor was like looking at the love of maybe the love of his life. And he was about to end her life against like his own, like he didn't want to. And I just felt right. the emotion. I thought he was shaking. I thought you could hear it like a little bit in his voice, just a 10 out of 10 scene. Like this might've been my favorite scene of the show of this episode. I know I said that earlier, but like there's just so many good scenes in this specific episode. It's why it's the best of the season for me. Yeah. And then yeah. Anna Sawai's acting when she is, not only deciding to commit seppuku, which you are having to do it yourself, you are literally going to end your own life, but also worrying that maybe JB, yes or no, isn't going to do the right thing and help her here, because if she has to do it herself and she dies by her own hand, she's committing a mortal sin. All of that all at once. And then when uh, Shidu comes in and stops it, she pretty much like collapses to the floor, which is exactly what you would think would happen with all that. All of the freaking everything, the adrenaline, everything happening, all the emotions all at once. It just drains from you. And then JB, the man, takes mm -hmm. her hand, helps her up. You know, it's love <laughs> right there. It's love. But and then, going and then in, that's that's we yeah, get some it goes to the bang to the bang. And <laughs> and and seriously though. We always talk about this, especially me, because I love the freaking theories. And, and you're saying how you did it with Dave out loud. I do it in my head if I'm watching it by myself, where I'm just like, so many thoughts are jumping in my head while things are happening. And as soon as the door is closed, I was like, are Tornaga's men going to like be here to like pull her away? And like somehow <laughs> they're going to think she died behind the screen or something mm -hmm. like I was like, what is why did they close the door? Like, I guess it's so the ladies don't see her die. I think so. I, think I so. believe, I, yeah, yeah. But I was like, "What is happening? Is this like a? Is this part of a plan?" And she's, and then you know, she who comes in. I was like, Phew, "This is just a. This is a roller coaster." Yabu, Mariko, Jesus. He basically looks at her, goes, "Stop being so dramatic. Like you're fine. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. He's so good. <laughs> Get out of here." <laughs> yeah. And he looks at JB with a sword and he just chuckles. He's like, "Are you fucking kidding me? This guy." <laughs> yeah. Um, so and many then, good things. Like yeah. You guys Dude. nailed it. Um, you guys nailed it. I just to touch on it again, the absolute gonads on JB to step up and be like, I love you, but I will kill you to make sure yeah. that you are not worried about ending up in hell. I cannot imagine doing that. And then one line which I didn't even think about until honestly, right now when I was looking at my notes, she sends, you know, the my last uh what's he say? Uh, I leave this poem as my final notes, my final words. I was like, yeah, that doesn't matter because she lives. That's going to be huge, I guess, going forward next episode because knowing the end, you know, without jumping there first, there's not going to be a whole bunch of closure between those two, yeah. right? So this that that poem, which I thought was, you know, mostly useless because she didn't actually commit Senpuku now is going to be huge going forward you know i'm expecting to cry when <laughs> it's finally <laughs> announced because it's gonna be something touching so you think they'll do like yeah. a classic like mariko's actress reads the voiceover and we're just like hundred as jb sails off in the <laughs> yes. sunset with rodriguez and, and cry oh with rodriguez yeah 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 <laughs> he and moves Ronnie on quick um no a hundred percent i feel like she's going to be narrating over it and jb's going to be crying or something like that um but anyway going forward that's going to be nuts um and then yeah. one tiny thing she took off the rosary 
right after Kiyama, she called out for him and he wasn't there. Yes. So I took that in like one of two ways. Like one, she was upset that Kiyama as a fellow Christian wasn't there to back her up and in frustration took it off. Or two, she didn't want to commit a sin weighing a rosary. I think it was more yeah. two. I took um, two. But anyway, Me too, it was... but it also could have been that it was respectful to take it off so you didn't like bleed onto the cross. Like it could have been yeah. that yeah. as well. It could have yeah. been like yeah, so either way, but I, I it was think also two is right. Yeah, it could even be like I don't deserve to be wearing this because I'm going to decide to commit seppuku mm. and go with Tornaga's plans over my religion and God's right. plans. You know, it could be any of those, but I believe two is the closest. And then of course, you know, like we Oshiba said what happened and probably what Mariko told them to do if it was going to come to fruition. Everyone's just like, oh, I want to leave. I want to leave. I want to mm -hmm, leave. Let mm -hmm, me out. Mm -hmm. And he was like, fine. You got to ask for a permanent. You're not hostages. Just get the hell out of here. Yeah. Is it worth like, do you want to bring anything up about their their final hookup? I think we kind of said it and it's just it is what it is. It was awesome. This is it. This is the final scene of the episode. It's a very it's a a long sequence of events, but it's mostly just action and mostly Yabu going forward and helping Ishido mm -hmm. with his plan to let in the Shinobi. And the, the takeaway was that the Shinobi were sent to basically steal Mariko away. I don't think they were sent to kill her. And maybe I read into that wrong, but I think the idea was that she was going to be captured and then there was going to basically rein in some of the nobles there. But instead, she leans into this. If they kill me and there's witnesses and it spreads it's it's going to get the job done of what we set out to do plus it's an honorable death and redeems her with her family so like that's like the ultimate sacrifice i will be really upset if she is alive because of how unrealistic it is that she survived there's that explosion no cool because mm. uh, like i don't even want to theorize if she is that just sounds awful to me but shouting out jb's amazing kill with the gun when he's like tell him to back yeah. up bang bang that was so Man. cool yeah, he uses yeah. the guns finally, but great ending of the episode. Hit me with whatever your final thoughts are before we get out of here. Dude, uh, it's just so much happened here, so much at once. I I agree with what you're saying. I don't think they were supposed to kill her I because she even has a line, like, I won't risk getting captured. Like, I'm not going to go to the gate. I'm going to go this way. Mm -hmm. uh, just to back up very, very slightly, we missed when Yabu – had his own messenger come up and say, hey, your plea with Ishido um, to switch sides, he'll accept it, but it comes with, you know, one caveat. And we don't know what it is. This is Which it. Is he yeah. he mm -hmm. kills the guard, lets everybody in, the shinobi in with the hooks. Um, and I don't, like, it's so weird because I understand where he's coming from, right? He was put in this spot. He didn't want to be here. He was just kind of forced in the spot with Ishido saying, hey, I'm going to kill everybody because he was never going to leave with Mariko. Like Yabu was supposed to stay. He was supposed to kill himself basically as a traitor. So it was either, hey, stay and kill yourself or do this. Knowing Yabu, kind of get it, you know, wish he was a well, little approach. bit well, a little bit more loyal would have been nice after everything that we just talked about. Um but slightly get how he was forced into it because he has been jumping the fence. Like, like we've been saying, he's been playing the game. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Just not knowing he was supposed to do it. What reason do you have for allowing Yabu to just walk back into Osaka? If you're Tornaga, what is the purpose of of, of Yabu when you're talking to Mariko and you're saying to JB and Yabu get together yet? Are they doing this? Are they doing that? They're obviously part of the plan. Yabu has no purpose except for to screw the plan up. Quote, unquote, the plan. I mean, the whole thing that Tornaga does is he brings Mariko to Osaka. If you let her go, you look weak. And if she dies... It's the ultimate goal. Almost like Hiramatsu, it's a shame. But, you know, she dies, ultimate goal. Everybody is going to rebel. It's going to, be, it's going to be mayhem within the castle. It's almost exactly like what we were saying when we were wondering if Psyche was going to bring Tornaga in, he was going to look weak, and they were going to be able to battle from within. So now he's having his own 
he's having his own warriors at within almost because the the nobles and everybody are going to rebel. So when Ashido says, I'm going to let you go, you can get your permit, you can get the hell out. Tornaga thinking as part of his plan, Yabu's there because he expects Yabu again to double cross him. And Yabu double crossing him actually gets him what he wants is he lets the Shinobi in. They come in. Mariko knows the plan. She goes to the door. Boom. Game over. That oh, doesn't yeah. happen if Yabu doesn't do what he did. Now, oh my God, I'm in. Little, I agree. Little, 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 little teeny part of me is like, did Tornaga tell Yabu to do all this? No, I don't think so no. because I think that's the whole point. And that's what sucks because Tornaga is fully using the fact that Yabu's a traitor against him. You know, he's using, he, he uses everybody. For their own purpose. He knows who you are, and he uses you for that reason. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know specifically the reason that JB was brought with Yabu, because Yabu's purpose is fully made aware right here. JB, I don't know. Like, can Tornaga assume JB was going to be Mariko's second and all that kind of stuff? No. I don't know the point of JB right now, unless he just needs to be present in Osaka when everything happens because he can go to the ship or something later. But Yabu's purpose was made clear this episode, and Tornaga, again, played him like a fiddle. I hope that that gets explicitly stated or something like that because that's amazing. And what I am just remembering now is I read the description for episode 10 on Hulu because they always have like the placeholders and it talked about saying we f you finally realized the full extent of Tornaga's plan. So like there's yeah. going to be all of these twists that he thought about and the more that he got correct, that's believable, like things like you're just saying, because in the last episode he says how JB and Yabu are so predictable if that yep. all comes full circle to mean to 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 have like a double impact like that, wow. Well, I just tore Naga's back to number one. That's what I'm freaking yeah. saying. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, we we got to Mario standing in front of the door, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... All right. So I was initially <laughs> pissed off, right? I'm like, just stand right, in the back. Yeah. Why'd you have to fucking stand there? But if this was the plan the whole time. It makes sense. They needed Osaka to be disgraced. Mm -hmm. They needed Tornaga needed Ashido to make the first move, make the first mistake, like he was always telling Nagakata not to do. Um, and you know, Mariko dying might have been that first move. So her death might have been inevitable from the I get. think it was. I yeah, think no, it was is. Yeah, 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 I agree. I mean, that's the whole point of Yabu being a part of this because if Mariko commits a puku and JB seconded her. Done. The the plan's fine because exactly like Ashiba said, if she dies, rebellion. Everyone's going to go nuts. But she didn't. So the backup plan is now yeah. that she is still alive, he's assuming that Ashido is going to say, well, we need to get rid of her or capture her, however you want to say it. And then Yabu is going to want to save his own life and he's going to help him. So that's what's going to happen. Now, the thing that is also a huge for Mariko, whether she is assuming I'm going to go ahead and headcanon that she thought this out in her own head, too, while it's all happening. But these Shinobi come in. They're coming in to be discreetly taking her or killing her. Yeah. They blew up a door and she died from blowing something up. The entire city is going to be woken up mm -hmm. and it's going to be known that they literally blew her up, which is going to be even worse. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. Plus, do you think Yab Yabu's there, Kiri's there, Shizu's there, JB's there? They're gonna spread the word too. All the royal yeah. families too. Like yep. they're mm -hmm. that they're gonna know everything. Do you think Yabu will have any redemption possible, or is he done? <laughs> We I say don't... this every episode for our boys. Yeah. I know. Seriously, I it's been think about insane. This. And but how... it's like, do you think Toranaga is gonna be like, dude? I know you're gonna do this. I, I knew you're like, a piece you, of shit, so <laughs> were, you were I forced you into this spot. I knew you were gonna do this to live, but like as long as you fight with me, you're good. Like I don't even that. know if there's gonna be time for that conversation because I feel like it's gonna be mayhem and then go. it's gonna yeah. be let's go, baby. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, I would think that Yabu and JB can have a conversation because they're still together right now, but I don't know that Tornaga's ever gonna have a chance to unless it's not gonna be like Storm. I feel like it has to be, but if it's somehow Tornaga just walks in and it happens some other way, Crimson Sky, 
Uh, so that's a good, great point, like that you brought that up. The name of this episode was Crimson Sky. Was this Crimson Sky the whole time? Because they, the Hiromatsu, Hiromatsu says it's one violent rush against Osaka. So in my head, that's an army rushing Osaka. Mm -hmm. Was Crimson Sky like. I would it, say that maybe it was started I with think her that's death. The I mean, because it, it started. Because the name of the episode is Crimson Sky. So we assume Crimson Sky got executed this episode. There was no battling between armies, right? So it's like, yeah, but there's assuming no way. Based on the name over reaching to try and explain why it was called Crimson Sky doesn't make sense either. Like, wh why would it be a like? Because I agree with you. I think that this was the trigger. Now Crimson Sky is going to directly happen in the first yeah. five minutes of, of episode 10. Yeah. I just don't understand why they called this episode Crimson Sky. Because podcasters, but, yeah, yeah, said fuck you guys. Because <laughs> well, like none of this could have been thought out because this was all situationable, situationable. Jesus Christ, <laughs> si situational. So it's not like they created Crimson Sky. Tornaga and Hiramatsu created Crimson Sky. You, you try to tell ago. me Tornaga didn't know every single thing that was going to happen. He, it's a book that he wrote. He's like no, Cassandra. He's not Wait, that good. Are you He's like Cassandra in The Magicians, if you want to give me yeah. a little one of those. Huh? Oh, he has it all written out, and we know how everything's going to end. So, no, I totally agree with you, Paul. I think that he obviously has to just think, like, whether Hiramatsu was part of this or not, let's just pretend he was because I like to think that my boy sat down here, Matsu, and talked it out. But say he just says, all right, this is what we're going to do, okay? Here comes Mariko, blah, 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 blah. I don't need to repeat it. It's almost like a choose-your-own-adventure book. Like, if this happens... You can go here, turn to page 52, or you can turn to page 72, you know, and that's how he wrote it out, like he always does with all of his plans. But again, yeah, there's a million things that can go wrong, but my thoughts are just that here's Crimson Sky. If I had it written down, Crimson Sky, part one, Mariko's death. Part two, let's go. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I that's mean, yeah, end. That's because <laughs> I mean, that's I believe it. it. I believe it because she says this was the whole reason my father oh, kept me alive. So, <laughs> so that could that could 100 percent be that one of Crimson Sky all along. He's been yeah. keeping Marty go around just to die, oh. just like fucking Dumbledore. No, oh, dude, dude, I've been trying to <laughs> I've been trying to throw that one out there all episode with Dumbledore just leading Harry Potter to his death, man. It's Tornaga and Mariko, man. I've been trying to say that. But uh, unfortunately for us, <laughs> Mariko is not going to come back to life i don't yeah. th i don't think so i mean at She's this point in the episode crux. i'm gonna also sp say spoiler where i just remember when i remember the description it also says in the wake of a death so like it's definitely so it's like, she's she's got to be dead otherwise yeah. again yeah. everything oh, breaks oh, and, oh, oh, okay yeah. yeah there's no way she's not dead yeah and i'm pretty so, sure even anna so I, what you know you can always bullshit if you want but i'm pretty sure she came out and did an interview saying how important her death is and all that kind of stuff I, I am looking at IMDb, and she is one of the five characters that appears in 10 episodes. But again, that could be her reading the poem that Paul yep. was talking about earlier. And it's so funny that Toranaga is only in nine because he wasn't in this one. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I do have to wrap this up soon. So I want to end this with a fun little segment where we're just going to all give a bucket list item that you want for the finale. And I've been doesn't have to be too deep. I have mine yeah. written down because I thought of the prompt, so I'll just say mine first. And I've been joking about it like consistently throughout this podcast, but I genuinely want Rodriguez and Mar Father Martin to come to JB's defense and or Toranaga's side in some form where right. it really highlights that they're both genuinely like good people and against like the oppression. So like I would love to see those two be on the good side at some point in episode 10. That was my number one was Rodriguez and JB reunion. I just want the, the, them to start chucking insults at each other. But uh, honestly, I kind of want some cannon, like some Battle. cannon fire to come into play of everything. Cause you know, it, yeah. it, it makes sense that, you know, JB that's, it, it was only in here because that's how John contributed to teaching Toronaga's army was about the cannons. But I genuinely thought that there was going to be more in play coming off that ship. So totally still, could be, yeah, could yeah. be a thing. Yeah. So I, I, that's one thing I want to kind of see going forward is them using the new cannon techniques that JB mm -hmm. taught them. Um, right. And yeah, that's, that's, you know, Tornaga to be happy because we know JB and Marco running off into the sunset isn't a thing anymore. So, mm -hmm. yeah, 
I'm going to go with Psyche being on the homie side. Yep. I True. really loved his character in his one main episode. We talked about how we were like, oh, he's our boy, and then he's not our boy, but he's still freaking cool as shit. And no matter what, he's obviously not going to get fleshed out. He's not going to get too many more lines except, oh, I'm here for you, bro, like something like that, and then they're going to fight. But either way, I just thought he was such a cool character, good or bad, but hoping that, again, this is also part of the plan. Mm -hmm. and he is inside the castle i think that would be great and maybe it's like too like wishful thinking maybe it's like too over the top to think that tornaga got also got that right and he's gonna have his brother on his side inside the castle but at the same time if you're gonna think crimson sky is going to work yeah it would be great to have riots inside the castle but you still know that you have a decimated army so having mm -hmm. your brother inside also isn't even like giving you too much of no, it, it makes the numbers over the work. top. It, it just makes it like even. It's not yes. even making you like, you know, a big dog. So yeah, I, I think that would be cool. I just really like Psyche a lot. So I hope he gets I, some more. I left that there because I knew you would say that one. That would have been yeah. my <laughs> secondary wish. And I, I genuinely think that all three of our bucket list items will hit next episode. But yeah. we're gonna right. we'll, we'll we'll talk about it at the top of a uh, podcast number ten. But for right now, that's it for me. I don't know if you guys have any yeah. parting shots. No, I think another freaking great episode and in its own weird way, you know, we always joked about the episode nine for Game of Thrones. It wasn't Battle of the Bastards. It wasn't anything crazy like that, but it was its own. Maybe we'll have to talk about it. Best episode of the season. We'll mm -hmm. have to figure that out once the whole season's over. But yeah, it, it was a banger. So I can't wait for the finale. It is going to be finally a lot of the action that we were waiting for. Maybe another bucket list is just seeing our boy Tornaga slicing and dicing because we saw a little taste of that. But mm -hmm. we even got our girl Mariko throwing throwing down. So I would like to see Tornaga getting more screen time throwing down. And keep it in mind when you're watching the finale, you're taking your notes, you're getting ready for the final podcast. We're going to end it with your top. We'll probably raise it to top five favorite characters okay. just because it's the finale. Top five favorite characters and maybe your top one or two favorite scenes and then your favorite episode. So like keep all that in your mind. And then when we when we talk about it after having the final podcast, we can kind of cement our, our last opinions on Shogun. All right, guys. One more Shogun Tuesday left. And I will say this is the first time that I fully dove in on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, on Shogun Tuesday, because I'm usually either sleeping or watching it maybe the next day because I want to watch it the day of the pod or something like that. But I watched it on Tuesday. I started tweeting and it was a freaking blast talking to everybody and then having people jump on the discord and talking more there. It's just that's like the best part of the podcast. So I'll be with you guys. I'm sure you guys will be too. Luke and Paul we will be hanging and banging for for Tuesday's last Shogun Tuesday. Uh, if you like what you heard, check us out at BingetownTV.com or just type in Bingetown TV on any of your favorite podcast apps. We have so much coming up. June is a huge month for us. We have The Boys, House of the Dragon, The Bear. Crazy month. We're also going to be doing Dark Matter in May. So just check us out there if you guys want to follow us, follow along with us. All right. One more episode left. It's sad to say. RIP to our girl, Mary Go. Once again, we are Bingetown TV. And thank you so much for listening.